Hi, Apasa. My name is Ashani Deo, and I'm a psychologist at the University of Arizona's Counseling and Psych Services. Today, I want to talk to you about what you can do to help prevent suicide. That starts with knowing the warning signs and taking them seriously. Warning signs that someone might be thinking about taking their own life include things they might say, like talking about dying or wanting to die, feeling trapped or hopeless, worrying about being a burden to others, or having a lot of guilt or self-hatred. Signs also include actions, like researching or planning ways to die, withdrawing from friends and family, making a will, giving away important possessions, saying goodbye, having extreme mood swings, or engaging in self-destructive or risky behaviors. You might also notice that someone who has been feeling really sad or down suddenly seems calm, which might mean that they've made a decision to attempt suicide. So what can you do if you notice these warning signs? Step one is speak up. Share that you're concerned about them or have noticed some changes that made you want to check in and ask, are you thinking about killing yourself? It's not easy, but research shows that asking someone if they've been thinking about suicide does not make them more likely to consider it. Just listen to their story and their experiences with sympathy, compassion, and a lack of judgment. Now, a few things to avoid when you're having this conversation. Try not to act shocked or surprised by what the person is telling you. You don't want them to feel judged. Don't promise to keep information secret. You may need to share it to keep them safe. Don't challenge them to prove the seriousness of their thoughts, argue the value of life, or debate the morality of their feelings. Also try to avoid giving advice or minimizing their concerns. And don't blame yourself. You don't have to fix the situation, but that doesn't mean that there isn't anything you can do to help. Step two, if they say yes, they are thinking about suicide, believe them. Suicidal thoughts or actions are not mere attention seeking. They're an indicator that someone is in a lot of pain and needs help. Ask the person if they have a plan, means, and intention to follow through. And if you can, help them remove any lethal means that they may have access to. And stay with them until you can do step three, connecting with a professional. It's not your responsibility to solve this on your own. You can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK or 8255 or text TALK to 741741 for the crisis text line at any time to get support. To get support, you might also be able to call a family member, trusted adult, or faith community leader. And if the person considering suicide already has a therapist or a psychiatrist, encourage them to call their provider or walk them down to CAPS. And if an attempt seems imminent, call a local crisis center, 911, or go with the person to a local emergency room for evaluation. Once the person is safe and connected with professional care, step four is to stay in touch. People in a lot of distress may struggle to reach out, so call or visit them periodically if you can. Invite them to go out with you or offer something you know is within your capacity to help with, whether that's getting them groceries, checking in regularly about their well being, or sitting with them while they make appointments. Even after a crisis has passed, staying present and supportive over the long haul can be an important part of continued recovery. Now, that takes us to the end of my quick tips, but there's lots of information out there if you want to know more. For a good place to start, check out the links below. And remember, we can all do something to help prevent suicide.